I'm Nicola Talent and you're watching Crime World, a podcast about criminals, drugs and the underworld in Ireland and across the globe. Make sure you subscribe to our channel and turn on notifications so you can be the first to watch all our latest episodes. You can also listen wherever you get your podcasts. So No Long has already lodged an appeal against his murder conviction, um, which is pretty standard. But as he's launched this launched this appeal, we're already starting to hear other information about attacks he has been linked to, um, not convicted of. But we have uh, spoken to sources who've spoken about some of the some of the really disturbing behaviour that has been tied to him. What 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 are we being told about these 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 alleged assaults? So we've been told that as far back as the early nineties, no long has been a suspect in a string of attacks on sex workers, um, to the point where he they were left in hospital with serious injuries. Um, these women were too afraid or didn't feel like it was a safe thing for them to do to come forward, whether that was fear from him or fear of the guardie and getting involved with the, the legal process. Um, and they haven't reported and they haven't wanted to testify against him to see that come into court. Now, we know as well from the research that I've been doing into No Long that he, is, he has been convicted of a long string of assaults um, on vulnerable women. That seems to be, you know, Nora Sheehan, who he was convicted for murdering, was a very vulnerable woman, as we heard in court. The w- other women that he has attacked are also, um, you know, one of them it was only 22 um, and another one was, you know, living at home with her disabled mother. She was in a very vulnerable position and we've heard all along of all these different incidents of him being a very violent man and that seems to tally with the, the new information that we've heard. And of course, a lot of the people of Noel Long's type, because of course he is convicted of murder, of the murder of Nora Jean, like some of their interacting with sex workers would not be unusual because particularly back in the day, um, um, you know, there would have been a stigma around that sort of work and, you know, that's gone all over the world, people of no no Long's type of nature. It would be historically accurate to say that they do prey on on. on people involved in prostitution. Absolutely. I mean, I spoke to um, Linda Kavanagh from the Sex Workers Alliance of Ireland um, last week about the story and about the fact that, the you know, there was this thing hanging over that the, they wouldn't come forward and go to the police. And I kind of wanted to get more an insight in, into that and why why they wouldn't. Um, and she spoke a lot about how, you know, back especially like nowadays, there's a lot of stigma around it. She said there's a lot of humanising language used about sex workers um, today, never mind back in the 90s when it was, you know, very taboo. Um, so there would have been huge fear that they wouldn't be taken seriously, um, ultimately, is why they didn't come forward. Yeah, and of course, it, prostitution has changed. And that's not to say it's, you know, it, things are better. But certainly back in those days, people would have worked out on streets a lot more, which is make them even more vulnerable to attacks. And if you look back on the history of Ireland, the number of sex workers that have been killed is, you know, is still shocking. Like, Absolutely. I mean, the one that sticks in my head always is the 1996 with Sinead Kelly. Um, that case, I mean, that story was kind of the epitome of that kind of era of sex work in Ireland, of, of prostitution, because of how how she died, how it happened. And we can see how a lot of, um, you know, the, the explosion of, I, I guess, prostitution in Ireland was back then in the 90s, I suppose, that was more visible. Um, and it was coming out of the, the shadow, so to speak, um, and into kind of something that everyone kind of knew was going on. And it, again, even up to now, we, we know that it's going on, that, you know, it, it's very, um, maybe not as visible as it was, back then because of the fact we've got the internet and we've got different ways now and different means for people to be connected but yes definitely there was a lot of danger and still is you know even behind closed doors danger for, for people working in that industry and there are cases even even recently that we can't get into for legal reasons where where you know some of some of those issues were at play it obviously brings up a wider debate about the legalisation or otherwise um, obviously Linda Kavanagh would be somebody who's speaking advocating for the legalisation. There are other people who say the the sort of, you know, making things illegal can protect women. It's a complicated debate. Absolutely. I mean, there's this new Nordic model that came into play that kind of um, 
it criminalizes the buyer the the of of sex work so the the person who solicits it um and then there's also i guess there's a huge conversation around whether you know human trafficking um and whether or not women in sex work can actually help guardy with human trafficking and giving them intel and giving them information about what's going on on the streets be- to try and help them to find these vulnerable people who are in this industry not by their own on, on their own accord yeah i mean it's a comp like it's a hugely uh you know it's a hugely big debate that goes on worldwide and we're not probably going to solve it but i suppose the nordic model to describe it would be that, uh, you know, it's illegal to, to basically purchase sex. Mm-hmm. So for the men who are who are purchasing sex, they're committing an illegal act. The act of the, the sex worker themselves are not committing a, an illegal act. And the idea was that um, that they would then feel more safe to speak to Gardaí because they're not Im- implicating themselves in a crime, which probably would have occurred back in the 1990s. Um, now, obviously, the, the adv- some of the advocates for sex workers say that it's not made anything safer, that it's just driven it further underground and that the, the people paying for sex are, are, you know, they're not stopping doing it. It's not stopping it, the demand, but it's it's taking it away from the, the site of the, of the officials. Um, in Noel Long's case, um, he 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 was never prosecuted for these attacks. No, but he he was investigated to a high degree in in some of them. Um, Absolutely, yeah. I mean, we lo- we even spoke about before how he was looked into as part of the. Um, murder of Sophie Tuscan de Plantier. Now, he was a person of interest rather than a suspect. Obviously, his MO was a very violent attack on vulnerable women. However, there was no sexual element there with um, Sophie Tuscan de Plantier when she was murdered. She wasn't raped or abused or anything like that beforehand. Um, and again, th- you know, that's that's one huge part of what he, he does is it, it's their violent sexual attacks that, that he commits. Yeah. Um, so no long he's currently obviously serving a life sentence. Um, what that means is that he's he's in prison for an indeterminate amount of time. Typically, people getting life sentences serve sort of 19 years. Mm-hmm. Um, but he's instantly launched an appeal. Do we have any details of that in particular? or We don't have any details. I mean, like you said, it is very common for this to happen Um Immediately, yeah. I think they have up to forty days to launch yeah. or to ish, or to appeal their sentence. Um, but whether or not he's, I assume he's appealing the conviction more so than the sentencing. Um, we don't know any more than that. I mean, when the trial ended and we were, the trial came to an end. We heard the verdict from the jury, and he was sentenced half an hour later to life in prison. And at that point, his solicitor, his barrister, um, asked for the free legal aid to be kind of extended should there be a case where he needs to come before the courts again and that's obviously what we're hearing. So the Central Criminal Court is on break now until October so it could be up till then um, that we're not actually going to hear any of this appeal. No, and I mean I think a lot of the people who are convicted of murder who plead not guilty which is most of them um, they're nearly always uh, will appeal their their case because you know it, it that really is all that's left to them you know Um um, no, do we know anything about where No Long is in prison or, or anything like that? I believe the last that I heard from sources was that he was in Mount Joy prison. Yeah. Um, whether or not he's still there, I don't know. Obviously, he could be moved to Cork so that he's closer to his family. He has family and a partner and stuff there. So we might be asking to move down closer there so that they can come and see him. Um, or he could be moved on to the Midlands or something like that. Yeah, I mean, they tend to take prisoners in, particularly, I suppose, he is an, an elderly man. Yeah. Even if he doesn't necessarily look it, and they will assess his needs if he has medical needs and needs for his family. Um, have, have we... The Nor- Norsheen's family, I think, you know, we, we have spoken to them uh, and, you know, they must be feeling a relief, I think, at this stage. Absolutely. I mean, they appeared on primetime. Um, it was the only interview that they gave about the the murder and the, and the trial and the investigation and everything like that. And there is a huge sense of relief from them that finally, after 42 years, this is kind of coming to an end. Um, they didn't want to give any comment about the uh, fact that he launched the appeal. Um, I can imagine that they're just going through so much 
stress and heartache and the thoughts of the fact that they had to go through all of that for 42 years, go through six weeks of a trial. Yeah. And now they're facing into this again. It's, I can only imagine how horrible that is. Yeah. And I mean, this is this is the other thing from from the victims, families that you see again and again, that also then after I think it's been changed now, but after a certain amount of years, people are entitled to apply for parole um, and all of that. It, it kind of re-traumatizes Absolutely. the family and I think even going to court it's it's a really traumatic experience I mean they were I think uh, you know obviously the passage of time in that case is makes it so unusual but I mean it must still have been really hard on them yeah, absolutely. I mean, they were there every single day without fail, even throughout all of the um, legal argument, which was heard behind closed doors. I mean, the jury weren't there um, and they sat through all of that um, every day up and down from Cork. Um, and, you know, it's 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 quite the spin. I was tired coming in and out yeah. on the Lewis. Yeah. I can yeah, only yeah. imagine how tired they yeah. were coming up and down from Cork. Um, and it's it's got to have been, you know, quite a relief to kind of settle back into... I'm sure there's a, a bit of an adjustment to settle back into life after something like that is over and you've, you've spent all that time looking for hope and answers and then to try and move on with your life. It's It's got to be quite difficult for them. Absolutely. And I mean... I suppose it's it's um if you look at the the history of of no long it just it you know it the fact that he probably knew how to get away with things i think is yeah. is a part of it like it's not a, sort of a moment of madness sort of cr- criminality there's a bit of uh, a very much a, a predator really in 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 the middle of a normal sort of world absolutely i mean he kind of he was able to pick out his victims yeah. um i can only imagine the amount of people that he that like we've heard about a certain amount of stories yeah there, that's only what we're hearing there's got to be more to it um yeah. i'm sure there is without a doubt people that we don't know about yeah um that have some sort of stories and it would be great if they were able to come forward and even if they wanted to speak to us about it that would be great because we would love to hear more about who he is as a person and what has been going on for the last 42 years because with things like this I mean the la- he was last in prison in 2014 for a violent attack on a man with an iron bar prior to that you know his from what I can find seems to be his last kind of conviction for an attack on a woman was around 1995-1996 and you know somebody like that doesn't just stop no um with sex assaults and sex attacks like that so there is that kind of curiosity of what happened in 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 that 20 year time span yeah because his offending does stretch across those four A decades or even longer yeah okay well thanks very much Claudia. we'll come back when we get more updates on any appeal absolutely thank you thanks